Now, number five, um, last uh, section, 4.2, we talk about similar triangles. So, similar triangle have two properties. If two triangles have corresponding angle are all equal. Are congruent, or we say equal so far. Okay. Then corresponding side congruent. No, not a congruent. We say the uh, form proportion. Sorry. And uh, we can say if corresponding side form proportion, then the corresponding angle will be equal. So that's the property of the similar triangles. Now, in this case, they didn't tell you these two angles are equal or not, but according to the information, 1 becomes 2, 3 becomes 6. So, say this is 3, right? Half. And then, then by the Pythagorean theorem, you can check. This will be square root of 10. This will be double, 2 square root of 10. So, in the middle, we kind of do this. Okay. So, this triangle will be the same as this triangle. And you can see that the sides, the corresponding side from proportion, this 1 times 2. And the 3 times 2, right? And the, this, this one times 2. So every side the times 2, times 2, times 2, you have a bigger triangle. In this case, we say the corresponding side form proportion. So let me. Erase those marks. So, won't be too messy here. Okay, looks better now. So, if these two triangles are similar triangles, then they're supposed to have same angle. If they have same angle, then the you you may use this triangle to find sine cosine value, trigonometry function value, or you want to use this triangle to find trigonometry value. You can see that. So if you use a smaller triangle, or you want to use a larger triangle. You suppose get the same answer, same okay. So if you use the Smaller triangle sine function is upshifter, upshifter divided by the hypotenuse. So you can just finish that, follow the definition. And then if you use larger triangle, so upshifter over hypotenuse. And after you reduce, 
two. You suppose got the same answer. Okay? They are the same answer after you reduce. So this is um one very important conceptual question that you realize as long as you have same angle, same reference angle. If you have same reference angle, no matter how big or how small your triangle is, doesn't matter if it's a big triangle or small triangle, your function value will be equal. Okay. So compare with sine, cosine, tangent, you can see that after reduce, you are going to have same value. Same value. Okay. So let me. Okay, I will leave all the marks here and uh, we go to part B. Explain why the function value are the same. Why the function value are the same? Because these two triangles are similar triangles. So the corresponding side are proportional. Now, next question, they ask you to sketch a right triangle. So, other than answer the question, other than just evaluate, you need to graph. Now, you don't know what's the angle, you don't, right? They don't tell you what's angle of theta. But they tell you this is opposite, this is a hypotenuse. So you can see that opposite and the hypotenuse, these two numbers almost equal. So they should be very close number. Okay? If these two numbers are very close, so we would, would like to draw they are very close to each other. And then you draw a right triangle. So this 13 hypothesis bigger than opposite side. That's right. But because these two numbers are too close, therefore the adjacent side become very small. And then you may use Pythagorean theorem to solve for x. So this x will be 13 square minus 12 square. Or you can say if this is x, so x square plus 12 square equals to 13 square and then move this one there, x square becomes 13 square minus 12 square. And then when you solve for x, you just simply make a square root. So this this very special triangle um, remember last time we have I said this a uh, very rare triangle three four five they are all whole number. If we are dealing with Pythagorean theorem, we always need to deal with the root. But it's a very rare situation we can find. Some triangle, some right triangle, they're all three sides are whole numbers. So I would say there's a beautiful numbers here. Now, once we find the three side, this adjacent, this is the opposite. This hypotenuse. Then you just follow the formula. You may fill in the blank to to answer. Now next number seven. Same thing. Um, what's the hypotenuse? Seven over one. Now I um I didn't mention on 
this question. When you draw a picture, if you want 12, 13, 5, you may draw another bigger triangle. You may say times 2, times 2, times 2. Can you do that? Yes. They are still same reference angle. You are going to have the same um, same trigonometric value, function value. Now, when they ask you to sketch a right triangle, they say a triangle here. Because there are more than one triangle satisfied. Opposite over hypotenuse equals to 13. You can say that 24 over 26 still equal to after reduce 12 over 13. So, but we don't need to draw a very big triangle. You only need to draw one triangle to satisfy the given. Okay. Then, number seven. If you want, you may say 14 over 2, but you don't need to. If you make a number bigger, you simply make it calculating harder. So, cosecant. Cosecant is the reciprocal of the sine function. So, sine function will be 1 over 7. So this opposite, this hypotenuse. So opposite and hypotenuse. And then you use Pythagorean theorem to calculate. This will be the length of the adjacent side. Okay. So same thing, once you have all three sides, you may easily answer the question here. All the calculating you may try by yourself. Number 8. Number 8. Remember, 30 degree is one third of the 90 degree, or is one third of pi over 2. One third of pi over, pi over 2 is the radian. So we can answer that. And then 30 degree, you draw a picture, remember, opposite to the 30 degree will be one half. You should memorize that if your radius is one. And then this number you should memorize. I talk about it on the um, 4.2 video. Okay. Now you may also use multiplier to com convert 30 degree to become radius. So you can choose this multiplier. multiplier. Number nine. So this, these two are equal. You kind of need to memorize that. And then secant. Secant is one over cosine. Okay. So once you have a graph for 30 degree, this is one half. This is 1 square root of 3 over 2. You need to memorize that. And the secant, um, if you don't remember first secant, you remember cosine, say that will be square root of 3 over 2 divided by 1. And then reciprocal, you make a reciprocal 2 over square root of 3. But remember, you need to rationalize. How to rationalize? You mark as square root of 3, square root of 3. To make your denominator is the rational number. Number 19. Oh, sorry, number 10. My eyes are too old, especially in the night time. Number 19. If they give you a degree, then you simply Use a calculator and then input the degree you can find. But be careful because on the test, sometimes I ask you to find, to evaluate the function value by using the radian. 
Okay. If you use radian, then you have to change your calculator to mod and choose radian. And once you choose radian, and the, if next question asks you to evaluate with the degree, then you need to remember to change back. So when I doing this homework by myself, it's a hard time to remember to change back and forth. Okay. So anyway, you need to remember when you are using your calculator to evaluate the trigonometry function, then you need to always remember to check your mode and make sure you are on the degree mode to do the degree question. Okay, so that's one thing. So I already show you how to change your calculator. Okay, let me erase all the mark here. Okay, no, I'm going to leave all the mark here. And remember, go to your calculator, make sure you have the right mode for the right question. And then you simply learn how to use calculator. Now, um, you can find this cotangent on your calculator. If not, then at least you are able to find tangent, right? So you have two ways to find cotangent value. One is the reciprocal of tangent or the cofunction. You use cofun um the cofunction concept. You input a complementary angle. to the tangent, then this will be cotangent. That's the same thing. Okay. Number 11. Number 11 is a little harder because they give you minutes and the second. And your computer, uh, your calculator only have two modes. One is degree, one is radian. So when you have minutes and a second, you want to change to degree with decimal. Okay. So this basically you need to change to decimal number. I didn't show the work here from the calculator. Uh, so six degree fifty two. 28 h is six point something 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 as long as you evaluate this number okay and the input to your calculator i will let you try first and then if you have a question you can ask me how to use calculator in the class time and the second same thing you can use calculator but don't input the minutes and the Second, you need to change it to decimal number. Some calculator you can find this mode. <laughs> if you have this mode, then you directly enter. Then it will be easier. Number twelve. Number 12, they provide a lot of information. And basically, they are talking about spatial triangle with 30, 60, and 90. So you should memorize all the information already. So this question, I will let you try by yourself. And uh, I don't think it's too hard. Number 13, work. Let's see. Okay. 
Now, number 13 and the number 14 is different type of question. They ask you to do some proof. So when you do the proof, first step, you start from question of given. Start from what's given here. Okay. And the, uh, let me take a back this question. Sorry, it's not a start from given. Start from left hand side. Start from so this the question they give you an equation and they ask you to prove left hand side equals to right hand side. Okay, so most of the time we start from left hand side. But if this question comes with this way, then I will start from right hand side to prove. Why? Because <laughs> from one, you cannot do anything. It's already very simple. So, um, so let me take back my word. Most time we start from left hand side, but the real the right idea is when you prove you start from complicated I think it will make more sense for you. Because when it's very simple, you cannot do anything. So we always start from complicated side. So here, cosecant is the reciprocal of the sign. And the sign is the sign itself. Therefore, you may just reduce it's equals to 1. Basically, cosecant and the secant, they are reciprocal to each other. And the two reciprocal multiplied together need to equal to one. That's obvious. Number 14. You want to start from left hand side or start from right hand side? Let me see. Use trick, a number trick, identities. Identities, we say, is a formula because the formula always is something equals to something, right? So we call this formula. Trigonometric identities to transform the left side of the equation into the right side. So we usually we start from left hand side to the right hand side. Most of the time it's like that. Now what's the trigonometric identity? We have done a lot of identity here. First, just like this one, secant is 1 over sine. Okay, any formula, we call it a identity because you are equal. And also, we learn a lot more. So we also learn some other identities like let me go back for you. We then we then call functions, right? We then call functions. Those we also call identities. And then we are going to learn more and the more and the more identities. You just have to prepare for that. But hopefully, um, I will explain well enough so you may just easy to understand and remember that. For me, I don't memorize. I just think when I need to use the formula, I think about what the formula need to be. Okay. So number 14. 
from the from left hand side we say if you have for example if you have a fraction you have a plus b divided by c it means you have a plus b and the times 1 over c so you distribute outside multiplication to inside addition you have a over c plus b over c that's very simple algebra one i review for you so here you distribute this to both so you are going to have two two terms plus together now after you have two terms plus together you reduce this one is one right and the cotangent is cotangent and the tangent this is not tangent this is one over tangent right one over tangent one over tangent actually is cotangent that's one of the uh, identities we learned today we learned today so cotangent equal to one over tangent so when tangent is under denominator you simply change it to cotangent and then what's this what's that don't forget about you have one here right so become 1 plus cotangent multiplied cotangent is cotangent squared now there's another another formula you have to pay attention is so let me erase i need a space here so let me erase So after here we have something new here. Cos sine square divided by sine square. What's that? We don't know, but if we plus them together, we need a new denominator. Multiple sine square, <coughs> sine square. So you have common denominator, and then the numerator you have sine square plus cosine square. Now I want to introduce a very very important formula here: sine square plus cosine square. We never mentioned this formula, but I will say this formula is the most important formula you have to learn from trigonometry and actually it equals to one so beautiful number right now pay attention here okay if you have a right triangle and pretend your radius is 1 or you say hypotenuse is 1 and this is your angle so the opposite will be sine theta because sine theta is opposite over 1 and here adjacent will be cosine theta because cosine theta is adjacent over 1. So this is opposite. 
blah, blah, blah. This is a JSON. Okay, so right now we don't want to use object a JSON. We use a sign, cosine. Now follow the Pythagorean theorem. Remember Pythagorean theorem is a square plus b square equals to c square, right? So a square is cosine theta. No, a is cosine theta, b is sine theta, c is what? Therefore, by Pythagorean theorem, a square plus b square equals to c square. So you have cosine theta square plus sine theta square equals to 1 square, which is 1. Now, um, this formula I think is pretty easy to memorize, but I just realized there's one new symbol I didn't mention. Probably you feel confused because this is online class. I cannot hear you, so, but I assume you have some question right now. Let me see. Okay, so let me see. When I talk about cotation, let me erase the mark here. When I talk about cotangent times cotangent, supposed to be cotangent beta whole thing square, right? How come my notation, my square is inside, is between cotangent and the angle? That's the notation, okay? So when you have trigonometry function square, you simply put the square inside. So if you have, for example, if you have, let me change it to other function. If you have, if you have tangent theta, want to make it fifth degree, you simply just put this here okay but don't put this big okay let's put a small degree always little need to little tiny that's good enough fine so when you see little square here is really a square now if you understand this is what this very important identity so this is one and then this time i try to bring this one outside why? If I bring it outside, you can see that this is cosecant. So I will say cosecant beta square. And then finally, you may put this square inside to become better notation. Okay, so I'm going to stop my video and then finish the rest of the well, four, five, many questions. Okay, so let me stop here and see you next video.